Welcome to the first of a series of tutorials for Cloud RF, an online RF planning service. In this tutorial, we will introduce the interface, the mapping, the settings, and we will create an area calculation. The map, as you can see, is a 3D globe, which is different to most other mapping tools that are out there because this allows us to model objects high above the Earth's surface, whether that's a drone, an aircraft, or even a satellite. You can manipulate the map with your mouse or for a touchpad with your fingers. Instructions on how to manage it are in the top right corner. You can click and drag to move the map around. Use the middle ball on the mouse to tip the view. And we've also got keyboard shortcuts. So there's hotkeys with the arrow keys on the keyboard. So up, down, left and right. Page up and page down to zoom in and out. And if you hold down control, you can also move the actual transmitter instead of clicking on the map. So we can hold down control and go right, up and down. When you start CloudRF for the first time, you're probably going to be looking at the island of Ibiza in the Mediterranean with Bing satellite imagery. If you want to change your location, you can fly there with the geocoder in the corner. So I'm going to Barnwood in England. And now I'm going to click on this grass over here. And I can also change the mapping. The mapping in the top right corner offers eight options and it is extendable. You can add in your own mapping. To add your own mapping, click my account in the corner, scroll down to where it says custom map, and place your mapping URL into these boxes. We've also provided some quick links for examples. So this is OpenStreetMap Cycle and this is Google Maps. Now those two layers are available in our options. The cycle layer is very good, has contours and hill shading, and Google Maps is instantly recognizable with prominent place marks. For the rest of the interface, starting in the top left, we have a template selection here. This will be brought to life in a later tutorial when we cover templates for quick access. We've got the settings down the left, radio analysis functions along the top, and a reset button here to reset the map. Along the bottom we have map analysis functions with opacity, 3D terrain, 3D buildings, custom clutter or obstacles, importing reference data, hiding the color palette on the right hand side, or downloading API examples for your settings. Anywhere you click on the map in the default mode will place the transmitter. This is the location of your transmitter. And the tooltip that tracks the cursor is showing the location in your selected units. The default value is decimal degrees. If you'd like to change that, expand the top left menu here and go to coordinates and change it to either degrees, minutes, seconds, or military grid reference system here. And notice we're tracking in MGRS. So first of all, we're going to create a basic area calculation just to show the most basic use of Cloud RF. We've selected our location, we enter our height, this is above the ground, and it can be in meters or feet. We enter our frequency, in this case we are PMR 446 megahertz UHF. We enter the transmit power. This is before the antenna gain. Feeder we're not using. Antenna, the default antenna in CloudRF is a dipole antenna with 2.1 dBi of gain. We're going to leave it as that. The receiver defaults, this is for the distant station. We're going to have one meter above the ground and low gain. 
sensitivity, very important. We're going to leave that as it is. We'll cover this more later on. The model, again, will leave these defaults and this will be covered later on. The environment, in this case, we have LiDAR data, so we're going to choose Surface DSM. And now for the output, we can pick the resolution of the output that we'd like to model. Well, as we have LiDAR, we're going to ask for 5 meter resolution, and we're only interested in 2 kilometers radius from the transmitter. As we update these, the resolution megapixels is being dynamically computed. Our plan is limited to 12 megapixels, so we could afford to go much higher. Clicking the green button fires off an API request, so that cost one API call. And this has now created a heat map of area coverage based on our rainbow color schema, which is the default, and it's layered it upon the map. On the map here, this layer can be switched on and off and hidden from view. It can be cleared so we can reset the map and get rid of the layer, but the layer still exists in our account. And if we'd like to recover the layer, you can find the layer in My Archive. Click here. Here is our last layer. I click the file name. It's placed upon the map. So that concludes the most basic use of CloudRF. In later tutorials, we'll cover these settings in detail, as well as the analysis function and exporting data from the system.